Somebody was recently asking in a Facebook forum, what are you all shooting when the moon is rather full? And I was like, the moon? And that's what we do today, right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so good to meet you and thanks for watching my channel. So the moon is a little bit a funny thing. When we're at the very beginning of our discovery of space, it's probably the first target we're looking at and it's fascinating to look visually at it. But then at least the ones of us who go in the deep space direction of astrophotography, we start to forget about it. But today we want to look at how we really shoot the moon even if we don't have experience in the planetary part of astrophotography. So let's start with the shooting. The big difference is that you shoot the moon the same way as you shoot planets. You make videos, not photos. So when you have an ASI camera, you have the ASI cap, which lets you shoot videos. And there are other softwares like Fire Capture, which enable you to do that. And the secret here is to make as many frames per second as you can. So you're not going with a fixed gain you're used for deep space, but you really increase the gain so that you can go down with exposure time, increase the frame rates and shoot as much pictures as possible in a very short time. So what you're aiming for is a movie which contains between three and 10,000 pictures and that consumes huge amounts of storage space. So it can be up to 100 gigabytes of storage space, which one video consumes. So be prepared. But there are also good parts. For once, we do not need guiding. We just need to have the whole thing approximately tracked and the rest the software will do. Also, we can work with alt azimuth, which makes the thing a lot easier. No polar alignment, no issue at all. We also don't really need a cooled camera. You can use your guide cam to actually do that. For this shot here, I used my ASI 585MC. When it comes to filters, you can funny enough choose two different strategies. The one is you use an UV IR cut filter. So it only takes the visual spectrum and leaves the UV part and the IR part out of the picture but then you can do exactly the opposite. And I used here this filter from Antlia. It's an IR685 filter, which means it only lets through the wavelengths beyond. So only the infrared spectrum. And that has a lot of advantages. When you shoot infrared, the seeing is not such an issue. Clouds are not such an issue. So I tried it actually in parallel and I got a substantially sharper picture with an IR filter. And the good part is given we're here in the 1.25 inch filter diameter um, range, these filters are actually much cheaper, much better affordable than the deep space parts. So let's assume now that you actually have shot your movie and you downloaded it to your computer. And so let's go now to the computer and start. Okay, and welcome to my computer, but not really the computer you used to, the Mac, where I run pics inside, but this is actually a remote screen of the Eagle, because the Eagle is by far the best Windows PC that I have. So everything that needs high performance in Windows, I run with the Eagle. So the first thing we need is PIP, and this is how PIP looks like. Now. These are quite old softwares actually. And presently I couldn't find a place anymore where you can actually download it. It looks like the original drive, at least when I tried it now, was not working anymore. So I will put the install file for pip in the description below. So what you're doing is you say add image files. And here actually I have my movie that I shot as a SCR file. So this is from the Sivo ASI cap software with which I recorded the video. And you see, this is huge. This is 37 gigabytes large. I say open. It asks if it actually should debayer it. We say no. And the second window opens and here we go. 
You can actually zoom here a little bit more in and the window will get bigger and the picture of the moon nicer. So now the first thing that we do here in the optimize options for, we say in this case, solar lunar close up. If you would shoot the full moon, you would go here with lunar full disk. But so this is a close up. Now the next thing we're doing, we're going here to output options and we choose the SCR file because this is not a very usual video format, but it works very well for astrophotography and also Auto Stackert works with it. The next thing we're doing, we're going here to processing options and we click on enable area of interest. And you see that a new blue window here opens. So we take this by the corners and remove everything that we want to actually have within our picture in this frame. So you also take the red here, you can enlarge it a little bit and we just put the middle somewhere where it's easy for the software to align. For example, here on this crater. Now I will move this here a little bit over. We don't need here all this black stuff. A little bit bigger. So that's the moon as we want it. And that here is that it can align it. With that, we go to do processing and we say start processing. Okay, it took about three minutes to process that. And this really depends very much on the computer that you're using. With that, we can actually close PIP. The next thing we need is Auto Stackert. Auto Stackert you can easily find on the internet and download it for free. Also, Auto Stackert has two windows. That seems to be a trend, why ever. Okay, so we say open, and you will see that in the same directory that your original video file was, there is now a PIP directory. You open this, and you will find here the pip file. Now we got down here a little bit to 27.5 gigabytes. In a case of planetary photography, this goes even much bigger down because the planet obviously makes only a little part of the whole image that you took. We say open and here it comes. Now obviously this is too big, you have here the zoom, so you zoom now it's actually the same system practically as with PIP. So what do we do? First of all, we go here to surface because it's not a planet, but it's the surface of the moon. And it says, it says here, image stabilization anchor, control click to set. So we do that, we just take something that actually shows nicely the software where we are. For example, this crater here, a control click. So I have it in here. That's fine. I also activate here the improved tracking. And with that, I say analyze. Okay, and here we go. So what we see here is the quality of the different frames. And you see that sometimes they're very good, sometimes they go down, but in principle, this curve here represents this. And so now we can actually look at individual frames, we can compare what is a good frame and what is a very bad frame. And we see also visibly here, very easy the difference. Now, when we just look from a curve, we do not want to have here this bad part being stacked. So I personally would say this is 75%. So we change this here, the frame percentage to stack to 75. With planets, usually you take much lower numbers. With surface pictures of the moon, you take rather high numbers here, rather high percentages. So we want to have the whole thing RGB aligned. We do not want to have it sharpened. We do it sharpen with other software. We do not drizzle. And TIFF is a very good format. We can leave that. Now, the next thing we have to do, we have to ensure that, that these frames are perfectly aligned. 
and we want to have about 50 to 100 different boxes who enjoy that. For that, we select here a number, for example, 200. This is the size of the box, not the number of the samples. And we say place a P grid. Now you see that this is actually done. And now it tells me that it has done 387 APs. These are alignment points. So again, this depends a little bit on your calculation power. If you have a rather fast PC, you can leave it like that. If you have a PC who is not that fast, you can actually clear that again with clear. You can actually increase here the number to 300, let them set it again, and so you have less and it takes faster. But with my PC, it shouldn't be any issue. I just leave it like this. And with that, we have everything done that we need to do. And we can say stack. Okay, and so this is done. As you can see, it still takes some time. The stacking alone took 20 minutes. But again, let's remember that we're dealing here with around 3000 pictures. And when we think how long it actually takes to stack, for example, in PixInsight, only a hundred deep space picture, then I think this is still quite reasonable. So we can now close also auto stack it down. And so you will find now here in the pip directory where we actually took the video file from this asp75 folder and in here you find our file and with this file we go now into PixInsight. okay and here we have now our stacked picture now the first thing that actually easily is recognizable is the rather strange color and that is because it's recorded as we know with the infrared filter which only lets infrared light through so it's obvious that it has kind of this reddish touch now with the moon this is kind of easy to deal with because let's just face it the moon is gray and yes it's beautiful these mineral moon pictures but this is not what we're looking at today we're looking at still standard moon pictures and they're gray and so let's give them their right colors. We go image, we go color spaces, we go grayscale. Yes, that's how the moon looks like. Issue solved. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen this. And there are actually tools like Regi Stacks, which you can also use in Windows to sharpen it with the wavelets. But wait a moment, we have an absolutely great tool. Even we could call it, it's a little bit off-label usage. And this is Blur Exterminator. I know, Blur Exterminator is by, <laughs> by definition not made for moon pictures. It's made for deep space pictures with stars, with nebulas. And you would actually wonder what should you do now with the sharpen the stars? And should I put any, any of these settings on? You know what? Let's just leave everything default. Let's just throw the triangle on there. And here we are. And I don't know if you can see in YouTube the effect, but it is just amazing what Blur Exterminator does. You could not in a million year do it better with Reggie Stacks. And it's just one swipe over defa default functions. There's nothing else to do. And it is razor sharp and not over sharpened. It's just beautiful. So the next thing we're going to do is we take curve transformation. Always a good tool to take. So here we have the preview. And the point is that actually this is already quite good. So we have to be careful not to mess it more up. Let's just look a little bit where these tones are. So this here is very high up. These shadows are about in the middle. And here we're getting slower, slower down to the lower areas. So what do we want to do? From my perspective, we actually should darken it a little bit, but we should not darken this here anymore. So until about here, which is right lower part, we want to keep it about how it is because it's good. So I just fortify that a little bit here and nothing's happened to it. And now the upper part, we want to darken. And you see that looks much nicer now much more detail, it's much more smooth. So that's already 
everything we want to do here. We can close that down. Another process that works well with the moon is the local histogram equalization. Let's get some preview. Don't be shocked, this will go away in a second. Just change the contrast to 1.3. Let's move this up to around 150 and the amount about to 0.5. And let's see now. We still see massive changes, but actually really nice. You see here the dark spots, they get substantially darker. Doesn't look so washed out anymore. We might tone it down a little tiny bit, but yeah, that looks nice. So we execute that. Now we go down to about 50 to see if also with small structures, we can change here anything good. This is actually subtle, but still it also gives it a little bit more ump, um, especially with the little craters. So I will also execute that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, our moon pick is good. Look at that. I think that's quite good. <laughs> okay, and that's it. I hope I motivated you to discover the moon. All the links of the softwares that I presented are in the description below. And now as a teaser, my next video will be about whatever is in this suitcase. So to ensure that you don't miss the surprise, please subscribe. Or if you wanna to belong to the first ones, to see such videos, please sign up to my Patreon channel, link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.